Hi, and welcome back to the Get to Know podcast. I'm Riley. And I'm Joe. And today we're getting to know Miss Spiso. So first, what is your name? So my name is Terry Spiso. What do you do here at the school? I am the school library media specialist. Um, I like to go by librarian, though, the old-fashioned term. And I also do some technology coaching with the faculty. How do you think you can impact students? So I like to think of the library as a place for um, kind of centralized gathering for students. So I like for it to be a place where students can come and feel comfortable to study or socialize or work with friends. Um, So we've kind of been transforming the space over the past few years to be more like a college library Mm -hmm. um, than the traditional like shh be quiet kind of library. Um, So that's kind of what we've been working towards with like the new furnishings and things like that. How do you take out books? (laughs) Very easily. Somebody walks up, tells me their name. I look up their name in the circulation system and we scan it and away you go. Very easy. And you can check it. You can check out as many books as you can carry, I always say. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do students take advantage of the library? So I have uh, a handful of who I refer to as my readers Mm -hmm. who are kind of like um, uh, usual customers. Um, I think that students take advantage of the library space more as a a social space and a a place to connect with um, friends or people that they're working on projects with, uh, things like that. So um, I wish teachers took more advantage of the space um, to kind of spread out and work on group projects and things like that. Um, That's definitely kind of um, fallen off over the years, I think, because everybody has a computer in their classroom. And it's just um, definitely since after COVID, teachers aren't as uh, into leaving their rooms, it seems. So there's that. Why did you become a librarian? So I actually became a librarian because I, as an undergraduate student, I have my undergraduate degree in anthropology. I was very into research um, and I was pretty good at writing research papers um, using primary sources and secondary sources. And as an undergraduate, I did work at the library. Um, So I did work for a little while after I graduated um, working for a nonprofit organization that did work in Central and South America in coffee growing communities. Um, But nonprofit work doesn't pay very well. So I decided to go back and get um, my master's degree in library science. And then I ended up getting a job at Boston University. So I worked at Boston University for about 10 years and um, doing research into helping them find funding for their medical school and specific projects there. And then once I had my first son, I decided that maybe being a a teacher librarian was a better schedule to have with a family. And so I decided to go back to school and get my certification in education so I could be a school librarian. That's the history. (laughs) So is, like, your son the only reason you decided to become a librarian in a school opposed to, like, a public library? Um, yeah, I mean, the schedule is definitely a lot better if you have a family. And actually, kind of unfortunately, the pay is better being a school librarian than it is being a public librarian. Um, Public librarians probably make like $20,000 a year less than I do as a school librarian. Um, So it's kind of like a very underfunded public uh, job, public, uh, you know, place job that, and it's unfortunate. Um, Even some of the university libraries don't pay uh, very well. Um, But at the university level, usually if you want to be a reference librarian at a university, you have to have um, at least a second master's degree in a content area or a PhD. So like if you want to work in, um, you know, if you want to work at Brown and you're the social sciences librarian, they want you to have at least a master's or a PhD in like history or, or, you know, English or something like that. 
Um, so it definitely takes more education to work at the, the university level. Where are you from? So I am from New Jersey. I grew up at the Jersey Shore uh, on a little barrier island. <laughs> How come you moved out here? So I um, came to the University of Rhode Island for mm -hmm. undergraduate college, and um, I used to, like, grew up near the beach, and I used to work at a, um, a surf shop, and there was a kid like that worked at the or was a, like a local surfer and he was gonna he was going to URI because it was close to the ocean mm -hmm. and I was like oh maybe I'll check that out I like the ocean and I ended up coming up here to go to undergraduate school and I went to graduate school at URI too so just kind of got stuck here in the Rhode Island mm -hmm. vortex. <laughs> do you have a favorite book? I do actually my favorite book is The Great Gatsby weirdly really? enough I'm just like super fascinated with that um, time period. Mm -hmm. um, so I just have always, in 11th grade, we had to read that, and I had a really mean English teacher, but she really taught me a lot about how to do research mm -hmm. and how to read literature, and um, that book has just always stuck with me. Will you be chaperoning the proms? Since I know, Gatsby? right? It's a great Gatsby theme this year. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm excited for that. It's a good theme. Do you have any hidden talents? I don't, I don't know. I don't have any <laughs> hidden talents. I, I mean, I do, I do enjoy cooking and baking. Um, and growing up, I was very into water sports, though I haven't done those in years. Um, I was a surfer and a water skier. Um, but yeah, no super talents, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Certainly not as talented as Fiano. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we heard that you had an interesting summer following a band. Could you tell us about that? <laughs> yes, yeah, so when I was in college, I used to follow the Grateful Dead mm -hmm. in a, uh, a lime green Volkswagen bus. Um, my friends and I used to hit the road and travel all over the east coast of the country following the Grateful Dead. Oh. It was fun times. Do you have a favorite song by them? Um, I am a big fan of Eyes of the World, actually. <laughs> Do you have anybody that inspires you? Do I have anyone that inspires me? Um, I don't know, you know, I, I like, I, my mom and some of the people in her generation, so she's like 80, mm -hmm. um, so she grew up kind of like, in the 60s, late 50s and 60s. And I think um, being a woman at that time period was, uh, there weren't a lot, like she didn't have a lot of opportunities. Her parents were from Italy and they had very like narrow views of what women could do. And, you know, women didn't easily go to college then, especially first generation people. Um, you know, like they became secretary. There were expectations, and um, I think it was difficult to be a woman there, but, you know, they kind of had their families and persevered, my mother and her aunt and her, you know, kind of sisters and cousins and stuff. So I think I always try to remember that time period because I think nowadays we've had so many more opportunities that, you know, they didn't have back then, so... So not a singular person, but like more generations of yes. people. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for you mm -hmm. today. Thank you so much for giving yeah. us your time and answering these questions. Thank you for having me. It was very good. Thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode of the Get to Know podcast. Bye.